Okay, we should be live on YouTube. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode one of Seller Lab, uh, Phantom Reese Teller. This is the first episode where we've got together a few, uh, few lads from the YouTube community. Um, somebody needs to put me on calls. Um, so, yeah, hi and welcome. We've got a few people just uh, coming in late because uh, next chat has just finished. Um, so we might just... Uh, Bring up the uh, the YouTube chat while we just wait for people to uh, join us. That was me that went on repeat, by the way. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I'll be doing the same in a second when I uh, bring up my chat window as well. We've got a nice shot. We've got a nice action shot of Peter as the thumbnail at the minute. <laughs> and we've got the chat open. Cool. Hi everyone in the chat. Uh, looks like we've got Lucy T. Lucy T first. We've got the monocle. We've got James. Um, we've got Jay Z girl. Um, Aid Critchlow, Jay Burke, Bex, the nose picker. Um, so far, so hi everyone and welcome. Nick's still banging on, is he? He should be um, coming on this one in a minute. Um, and we've got Jason. Hi, Jason. How are you? Welcome to the first episode of Silly Lads. Girls are always allowed here. Lucy T, as you know. Um, Lord and welcome in our chat. We're all boys tonight. So how are you, lad? How's Corey? Um, yeah, I'm pretty good. Things are, things are picking up. Sales are moving. I've had... I've had I basically I put loads of things on auction uh, the other day because I'm trying to clear out a load of dead stock and I've had about like bids on about 20 items today which is quite nice 99p bids albeit but they're still bids. <laughs> and Derek, how things been for you, mate? Yeah, it's been good. Um, I've been um, going to the big sales over the weekend and picked up some good things. Um, plan to list them over the next week. So yeah. I've been out today buying more shelving for my storage, so building it, which takes time. <laughs> so, yeah, good. Excellent. Um, Peter, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm not too bad. I went out this morning car booting, like yesterday, but this morning I got spotted twice <laughs> for, for being on YouTube. Too uh, it's always nice to see, see subscribers, but... Too famous, that's what it is, Peter. Mm -hmm. to 1k, yeah, have you almost hit it? Uh, right. not yet. Uh, what am I on? Uh, have a look. I think I've done 926 or oh, that's exciting. Everyone who's watching, yeah, I love a look. Everyone who's watching live right now, make sure you go and subscribe. 927, it's just gone up one, <laughs> yeah, close. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so I'll just say a few hellos in the chat, and then we will um, we will get to the uh, actual subject. So we've got um, I can see Stu Mandry's joined us, Chris B, uh, Edward Frantic Serena, the nose pickers joined us. Uh, we've got Lynn from uh, Lim Retro Vintage. We've got Jason Entwistle, uh, Rod from Pommy Pickers. We've got George F, uh, Southwest Savers, the Chelsea which is Alan. Um, We've got Danny, we've got Richard Payne, um, we've got Ray Deacon. Uh, can't read that last one, Thailand Heron. And um, we've got Dave. And um, we've got uh, James saying that uh, your mic is putting everyone else to shame. I do. My mic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just having a thing from George saying he can't uh, he can't join. Just bear oh. me a second. My mic is in like such a my setup is so like boshed together. My mic is like balancing on my desk, and I know for a fact if I touch it, it will fall down. So I've got to be so yeah. careful. <laughs> We've got Shrek as a troll. Hi, Shrek as a troll. Uh, howdy, boy. Uh, DBG. Hi, DBG. And uh, Southwest Sellers, I'm not in my jammies. No, this is uh, this is my polo shirt. Mm. 
<laughs> there was a second, guys. I'm just getting a message from uh, George. Uh, Z Green popped in and Z's sorting out his PC up. So, sh shouldn't be <laughs> just, uh, Sorry, folks. This is our first time trying this live. So, I'm just going to. Uh, just gonna send this message out to George again. Oh hello. Have you seen Stu's comment? What's he saying? What time does the stripper come on? Uh George says it'll return with any minute. <laughs> <laughs> well um while I'm getting underway, Corey, do you want to introduce yourself to the uh to the reselling community that are currently watching us? Um so if anyone doesn't know uh, i'm sure there are people that don't know that sounds quite egotistical my name is corey otherwise known as power reselling on youtube uh, i've been reselling for about three years i started literally from nothing like i sold a few things from my bedroom used that money reinvested it and basically i've just been doing the same thing for about three years i didn't even have a printer when i first got started i used to print out the labels from sales at college until i'd made enough to buy like a decent printer and yeah that's that's the story really i just kind of started from zero and just kept reinvesting 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 until i got to the point where i'm at now what about you peter uh pretty much the same i've been doing it like three three and a half years um like obviously selling things from the bedroom and then um taking a bit further chat shops car boots auctions uh jumble sales that, that sort of thing um and, and then also to, to the plans to go into youtube and here we are today pretty much cracking you, derek yeah my name's um derek i'm also known as tap peddler on youtube um i've been a full-time reseller since um august last year um, i've been reselling for quite a number of years before that um, and I saw set car boot sales and auction. Yeah, it's, it's going quite well. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. You need to mute your uh, Facebook tab, Andrew. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it off. I'll turn the sound down. If you right click on the tab, you can mute it. That's not happening. No, oh, I thought, thought I could have made a life changing, a life changing bit of advice there. <laughs> could help, yeah. I don't know if anyone knows how to turn off push notifications, that'd be ace. Uh, we've got lots of people joining us in the chat. Um, we've, got Ian, we've, got, we've got about uh, 72 people watching at the minute, so apologies for us not keeping up with the um, the chat. Georgina's just asked a question, what does everyone sell? So some new faces for her. Um, what would you say your specialty is, Corey? Um, anything that makes profit, really. I more trade in like toys and games is probably what I focus on the most because it's where I'm most knowledgeable, I would say. But honestly, absolutely anything. If I can make money on it, I'll buy it and flip it. So nothing really in particular. More on Amazon books and like sealed board games and things like that. But yeah, honestly, more or less anything I can make a profit on. And I also run a wholesale vape account, which I guess is one specific niche that does pretty well. But reselling wise, mostly toys and games. That's cool. I've just seen Zaheer's joined us as well. Hi, Z. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Hi. We were just doing an introduction, so I'm pretty sure everyone in the reselling community knows who Zia is. But please <laughs> introduce yourself. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that, but yeah, hi guys, um, Zia. I've not done a chat um, for quite a while, actually, like on anyone else's channel. So, kind of weird feeling, really. But yeah, just sell on eBay, um, and um, you know, both uh, Beck and I, and my wife, moved up north to help fund the transition to to being like um, sellers online and we're still in the process of trying to get it to work so that's pretty much all there is to it fantastic cracking and uh, derek what do you specialize in mate um again pretty much anything i can get my hands on um although i do tend to go towards electronics if i can um but yeah, I can buy CD players, um, separate systems, tuners. But I'm also quite happy buying things like this. <laughs> um, and yeah, anything I can pick up, a car boot or um, at the auctions that has um, profit in it. Um, so yeah, pretty much the same as Corey, really. 
I am. Um, I do want to apologize. Carrie Ann said, "Corey, you've gone bad kung fu movie uh, sound and lips move." It's my internet. I, that's why I look like a potato on the stream as well. My, I need to get a Wi-Fi booster. That's why I look like a bad kung fu movie. <laughs> no worries. Okay, Peter, how about yourself? Uh, just pretty much sell anything. I can get my hands on. Obviously, like more into the gaming side of things, but. I've recently like got into clothes. Um, just if if I see it, it makes money, I flip it, pretty much. <laughs> Fair enough. And I've just seen uh, Nick yeah, has joined yeah. us as well. Nick, if you want to introduce yourself to everyone who already knows you. Hello, <laughs> I'm Nick. <laughs> how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Zahir. Hi, Nick. How are you doing, man? Hey, who have we got in? Corey, Derek, Pete. Wow. Hello. Good to see you all. Feels really weird being in the chat. Oh, and Andrew. It's, it's been <laughs> such a while. Yeah, yeah, I might be here yeah. as well, Nick. We're just waiting for um, George to join us as well. He's having some technical problems. Oh, don't know good looking George in. He'll show us all up. He can't click a link <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, so we were just doing introductions and talking about um, what we sell. By the way, folks, if anyone's got any questions in the chat, feel free to. Um, to drop them in just say a uh, question in front of it so we know it's a question nick what do you specialize in um hoarding tat <laughs> <laughs> pretty much um i don't really specialize i've actually tried to specialize a couple of times in my so-called career um we did nothing but clothing for a while and it drove me insane did nothing but lego for a while and i got bored hey george Hello. So I tend to enjoy the thrill of not knowing what I'm going to find, to be honest. And there we've got um, fake George Ross. <laughs> Say hi, George, when you're ready. Yeah, not ready. Carry okay. on. <laughs> well, well, we'll let George carry on making his adjustments in the meantime. Uh, Bex has got a uh, question for us in the, uh, the channel. Uh, she wants to know, what would be your absolute top tip for a newbie reseller? Should we start with we'll start with Corey first. Top tip for an absolutely newbie reseller, I would a hundred percent say research an item before you buy it because it's the quickest way to end up, especially when you're first starting out and you don't really have any money. It's the quickest way to tie up all of your money in stock and have like zero sales. Make sure you research items before you buy them. That would probably be my tip. So that's a research. Good tip. Derek? Yeah, I probably would have said the same, but since since Corey's took that one, <laughs> I would probably say make sure that you work out all the fees and the postage costs and all of that before you um, list it so you don't become a cropper when you actually come to send it out and it's you've wasted all your profit on the postage. So, yeah, make sure you know all the costs involved. That's a good tip. Well, we'll skip over George for a sec while he's um, doing his hair. We'll go to Nick. <laughs> uh, what was the question? Newbie, newbie tips? Best, best, best new tip you could give for a newbie? Um, I would say, yeah, sell your own stuff first. Don't invest loads of money in, in, in random tap. Go through the house and sell a load of stuff and find out all about eBay by selling stuff that you're not investing in. That's what I tend to tell people, tell people who find the channel and say, oh, I want to give this a go. What should I do? Just go through your attic and your shed and your kitchen and get rid of all that junk you never use. Make a load of money and uh, find out if you enjoy it and find out, you know, get some feedback. Learn about eBay and shipping and postage and all that stuff before you even spend any money. Good tip. Peter. Uh, well, I would pro probably say, like, make sure wherever you live make sure you know where your local car boots are auction houses charity shops in a what about a 10 mile radius because obviously a lot of people don't drive so they've got to rely on the public transport so know where you can get to where your your limits are and then obviously like when, when you get to car boots chat shops auctions obviously if you're a newbie, newbie reseller so set yourself a limit or what you can spend, because obviously you can go really high over the top. All right, and Z, 
Mm -hmm. no pressure but we've had some good tips there <laughs> um good tips um i think the number one thing that comes to my mind is uh actually just don't take take on as much information as you can but you have to just dive in really just dive in it, i mean like you said like um nick has mentioned you can sell stuff from home um the rest of it like the logistics like you, you know you, you're going to learn all of that and sometimes you can learn that the hard way but we've talked about this previously where sometimes the best lessons are the ones that you pay for so that one time where you ship an item out and find that it costs you that much more to ship than you thought it would and it ain't your profit you're probably going to remember that one time and probably you won't repeat it um although saying that i've done that a couple of times so i know that i have to take maybe a two or three times to learn a lesson but most people can normally figure it out once i think that's a great tip just just to start I mean, how many times have we looked back on our life and said, I wish I'd started this years ago, no matter what it is, yeah. I'm not talking about reselling. You just look back and think, why the hell did I not just do this? I mean, you'll get so wrapped up in trying to work it all out before we start. And yeah. I think it's a byproduct, go. isn't it, of the like the in uh, it's gonna make me sound so freaking old, but it's like a byproduct of the information age because you've got so much information at your fingertips. And I think people say, like, was it par paralysis through analysis? I really like that kind of um that phrase. And because yeah. we've got more information now than we've ever ever had, and you can just take it all in and end up just it could just, you know, it can paralyze you rather than you know going in with the basics and just getting going and also because there's so many stories out there about how many people have been ripped off on ebay and how many fakes yeah. there are out there you can just literally like used to get paralyzed thinking i'm so scared to sell anything on ebay now and it's just not true it's you know we've all bought fakes haven't we uh, well i mean not on purpose but like I, i've i've bought items that have turned out to be fake a couple of times it's just you learn now i know what to look for in, in those particular instances yeah Oh, it's just like old times, see. We should do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, taking over. Do you, do you know what? It's it's <laughs> been a real kerfuffle. George and the Jesus belt, yeah. <laughs> it's this Facebook thing. I need to. I I will have to get back on it. I had to get Beck to email me the link that Andrew sent over. <laughs> <laughs> it's like really long winded and convoluted. I need I need to stop being a caveman. I think. Um, yeah. So, um, George, hi, welcome. Hello. Yep, sorry for the delay. Um, my phone was uh, messing about. But, uh, Just struggling to hear you slightly, George. Is it possible to turn the volume up? It's OK. All right. Is that better? It could be me, actually. I turned my volume down on my computer. Uh, <laughs> right, I'm George Ross, uh, based in Essex. Um, Specialise in the vintage retro collectibles sort of thing um yeah <laughs> there you go is that all right <laughs> perfect <laughs> also voted as the man with the sexiest hair in the reselling community mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm andrew uh, i run money mental uk which is the youtube channel you're currently watching um i've been a i'm a part-time ebay reseller full-time civil servant and uh yeah I live in Wrexham in North Wales, and I'm the host of the Wrexham Meetup on the 15th of June. If anyone wants to join that, head on over to the chat chat, go to the events page, and, and come click to say you're going. Um, we've had some more questions in the chat, folks. We had a question from uh, James Collects, which I've completely um, missed now. Uh, he says, what's the best favourite thing you've ever bought to resell but have ended up keeping? Uh, we'll go Corey first. Let's go in the order that's on the screen. So that's not a very good question for me to answer because I've actually never bought something and kept it for myself. I've had a few purchases which I've liked, uh, more in terms of just like nostalgia and things like that when I pick up like Tamagotchis and like just retro games that I used to really be into. But in terms of buying stuff to keep, I've actually never bought something from a car boot or charity shop and kept it myself, which I'm quite I'm quite proud of, to be honest. I'm quite impressed. Otherwise, I would just have this massive mountain of stuff that would be never ending if I started keeping stuff for myself. So <laughs> fair enough. 
Derek, I mean, as far as I can work out, Derek, you've kept your, all of your chat so far. Yeah, I keep everything. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't yeah. quite figured out the selling part of it yet. Is that no. what's going on? I don't think I've ever actually bought anything that I was going to resell, but then ended up keeping. I don't think I have, although I did buy a Zebra printer, like a label printer last week um, that I'm probably going to keep. But I sort of did buy that to resell. So, but I haven't made a decision on that yet because I, I haven't got any wires for it. And I think so. Um, but I don't think I've actually bought bought anything I've ended up keeping. Um, Apart from everything in that room. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all for sale if anybody wants to buy it. <laughs> How about you, George? I reckon you've got a sign you want to keep. <laughs> uh, it's mainly the wife. Everything in this room, uh, the picture I bought to resell, she kept it. This lamp, bought to resell, she kept it. This lamp, we're keeping that. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, personally, um, anything Jurassic Park related. So, it's a t shirt from like 1993. Um, that's mine. Uh, yeah, everything's for sale for me. Oh. Sorry. All those lamps are here. <laughs> <laughs> Not going into that. <laughs> your, your volume is really low, uh, George. I don't know if you can get any nearer the mic. One second. <laughs> somebody, somebody said it in the chat as well. So Nick just wants to see your shirt up close, George. <laughs> <laughs> if it's on an iPod, is there like a speaker phone mode for the mic? That might, I don't know if that will, I don't, I don't know, I don't. Uh, oh, oh, we've lost him oh. now. But I'm still here. I know. You, uh, you've killed George now. <laughs> Nick, have you ever bought anything to sell and ended up keeping it? Um, I was trying to think. I've certainly kept items for longer than I should have done because I wasn't too keen on getting rid of them. Um, when I got that big gaming hall that had the fabled Atari cart in it, I kept the one of the snezzes for at least a year out of that. Um, but no, I used to collect a lot of stuff, which kind of morphed into my reselling. And now having this backlog is kind of replaced my collecting. So I kind of, yeah, I keep stuff. I curate it for a while and then sell it. But I don't, tend, really? to, I like I don't tend to have that need to keep stuff anymore, you know, kind of it's gone. Fair enough. How about you, Peter? Um, trying to think, really. Well, I'm always looking around chat shops, car boots, and picking up like if it's especially gaming related stuff. Um, like if it's a very difficult fine line. Whereas if if it's a like, God, I don't know, uh, Mario Kart 64 on Nintendo 64. If, if I pick up that or or, or a game that's worth over 50, 50 quid, I'm like, do I keep it for my collection or do I sell it on? But normally, well, it's half and half. Sometimes I keep it. Sometimes it's like, oh, that'll do. It will go to someone else can have it. But it's sort of like a fine line. Because if you see my latest video, I picked up a whole tub of Pogs, the old style Pogs. And I'm thinking, do I flip it or uh, go for my collection? Because that, that's the secondary thing I collect other than gaming so yeah it's half and half but what can you do that must be difficult with your with your gaming collection peter knowing that you you know you've got to make that decision like you said if you pick up a valuable piece yeah. is it worth flipping it for 50 pounds or more or just sitting it on the shelf and then you have to have a chat uh, with these you days um now i'm a bit wiser normally i'll flip i'll flip it yeah because there's obviously there's only so much room you can have for a collection yeah to be honest Conversely, I guess with gaming, it tends to only ever go up. So you could see. Yeah, true. Yeah, up. you're basically sitting in a gold mine. Yeah, yeah. Unless you buy Resident Evil Six on the uh, Xbox 360 for two quid at a car boot, and then find out it's one pound eighty two, brand new and sealed. <laughs> if that happened, and then you buy two copies, and then you find out that they're Spanish. <laughs> oh. So you can't sell them. But yeah, apart, apart from that minor gaming mishap. Retro gaming tips with Andrew. The channel's coming mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, don't, don't don't come to me if you want to go to find some on gaming pickups because you won't get any. 
hopefully Andrew, whilst we're live as well, I think you might hit 500. Apparently, you're at 493 at the moment, which is oh, exciting. Right. It's a separate video for the Strack, is it? For the Strack Gates, yeah. okay? I'm not doing it live on this. I've ordered a mask. <laughs> oh. <But laughs> no, oh, 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 You've ordered a mask? What? So, I have a, I have a deeply held belief that Strack is a troll, and I've said the only thing that could stop me from recanting that belief is if uh, I get to five hundred subs by the end of May. We're but four days off. But well, surely, we... if the movie studio themselves refer to him as an ogre, I mean, that's like irrefutable. You you can't, you, you know, that's just that's that's like. That, you're, you're flat earthing right now. Don't, don't get him started, Z. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's flat. You yeah, can't... You're trying logic and reason on Andrew. That doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is species confused, that's all. It's not all <laughs> right, okay. How many of you watched well. the um, video of Andrew eating the onion? That was probably one of my favourite streams I've ever watched. All I'm time. Mine. I need to go back and see that. Yeah, yeah. I watched so everyone in the in the side chat who's not subbed to Andrew. Do it now because apparently he's mm -hmm. going to get a, a Trek mask and make a fool of himself. <laughs> We'd Thank all like can. to see it. We we yeah. can surely make that happen right now. <laughs> I, I have got the Trek mask hasn't arrived yet. I only ordered it yesterday. That's all right. We can wait. Oh. <laughs> Andrew even has a fan account. If you look in the uh, like, uh there is someone who is called Shrek as a troll. <laughs> I saw that tonight in my chat. I thought that was Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is also a Shrek as an ogre fan account as well as a Shrek as a troll account. Fortunately, Shrek as a troll acknowledges the truth. Um, I, see, let's get back on topic. Have you ever bought anything uh, and then kept it? I'm guessing there's going to be some RC in there somewhere. I, I, it's a difficult one for me. I do struggle with that. Um, I've, I've always struggled with it. I think it's because when I wasn't reselling, I was very much a consumer. Like I loved buying things. Uh, for So it used to be for my PC. And then um, obviously you start reselling and you don't have that kind of income available anymore. And it's it has left a gap in me. I, I admit I'm quite shallow when it comes to these things. Um, I like buying stuff. So in a way, reselling has been good because I've been able to buy a lot of stuff. Um, and I think I'm now at the stage where kind of like, you know, that thing that you talked about, about holding on to things a bit longer than maybe you should, um, just maybe overpricing them um, and things like that. So, I mean, currently, you know, that that kind of manages for me. So if I find something I really like and I fancy keeping, I'll just price it probably higher than I should. And then if someone buys it at the over market value price, then I can't grumble. Or if they put an offer to me that at the time I feel like I can accept, great. But, you know, I, th I think um, I still do struggle with that. And, yeah, I've kept a bunch of stuff. I can't really go through a list. It'll be... <laughs> I've, I've still got my limited edition copy of Castlevania that cost me a pound. I'm going to have to list it, but I'm going to list it high. I'm going to list it for 300. Ooh. See wow. That would be nice. How are you getting on with the um, new unit, by the way, Z? It looks like you're really enjoying it now that you've moved into there. Yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. Yeah, I can't can't grumble at all. I really, um, the best thing I think about it has been, um, like for example, this bank holiday weekend. I've done nothing, and I don't feel um, even a little bit guilty. It hasn't invaded in my spare time so i've been able to spend that time with um beck and the girls without any there's it's just yeah i like that side of it and then tomorrow it'll be like back to work and mm -hmm. so i like that side of it so I can simply because you've got separation the stuff's not there bearing down on you saying list me work on me <laughs> yeah little things like that i mean like for example because obviously i sell a lot of rc parts we do tend to get a lot of questions about oh, uh, could you measure between this and this or can you you know tell me if this will fit this and now i i you know i i had i need to sort this out but um i want to get like a stock reply where i can just say yeah I'll, I'll check it out first thing on monday and i don't have to worry about it and you know in, until i'm back in back in the office so um i i love that that it's been mind-blowingly good i can see a lot of people in the side chat T uh, saying about Andrew doing the chili challenge, I have sent that hot sauce, Andrew. So that is on your way, by the way. <laughs> oh, great. Have you sent the right color this time? <laughs> I have. Yeah, it's one point three million. That's what I sent you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I swear the entire Taff Chat community is dedicated to finding ways to kill me. <laughs> That's it. What, what, what abuse and torture can Andrew suffer this week? There's even a poll about what challenge I should do at the end of it. Not a poll that I have legitimised or taken part on, but about what challenge I should do at the end of this live stream. The answer to which is none. <laughs> but we've got some more questions in the chat. A uh, question for George. Dave is asking how long you're in the bathroom for before the live stream. <laughs> can you hear me all right first? Can yeah. Hear you? All right. Uh, five minutes in and out. That's what I say anyway. <laughs> That's 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 twenty five minutes, Dave. <laughs> that's exactly what uh, Amy says. <laughs> now, there is a set routine, but yeah, five minutes. That's what I say. That's my final answer. And then Steve was asking, Batgirl, Wonder Woman, or Catwoman? Catwoman. I know. Surely it depends which ones you're talking about. Are you talking about Michelle Pfeiffer Catwoman, or are you talking about the new Catwoman? You know, it depends, really, doesn't it? I mean. Michelle Pfeiffer. I mean, that's yeah. hard to beat, surely. I, yeah, it's got to be Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman. That that whole question was a bit vague. From see, and then you've got to wonder which which Batwoman or Batgirl are you talking about? I mean, well, was the question if you if they all had a fight, who would win? Because that's quite interesting. Oh, I didn't think it was. That this is a happily married man, though. You know, he's not taking it the same way as me. I think really? Steve is coming on though, so he could perhaps explain the question to us. He's hit. Glaring at his screen. Oh. You've just hit 500 Hello. subscribers, Andy. Yeah. Hello, Steve. Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I'm like, I think it's better. <coughs> well, Steve, we were just trying to, we just got to your question about Catwoman, Batwoman, or Wonder <laughs> Woman. Yeah, you need to you need to go in with a specific Steve. You can't just throw that out without you know which which actresses are we talking about here? I mean, are we are we talking Anne Hathaway? Are we talking Michelle Pfeiffer for Catwoman, for example? Um, Catwoman Halle Berry. Oh, Catwoman Halle Berry, the new Wonder Woman. No, the new um, Wonder Woman, sure Gal Gadot. Gadot. <laughs> yeah, Definitely that's the one. Wonder okay, Wonder well, the, the, the yeah, I, I don't. I, I'd have to go with um, Wonder Woman there. I think Gal Gadot. Mm. I have a soft spot. I feel safe with Wonder Woman. Yeah, I've got as as George knows, I've got a soft spot for brunettes, so <laughs> that's my choice. My answer is whoever Zahir said, because he sounds like <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, James Collects agrees. Lisa Cotton has said, question, who is the best-looking reseller YouTuber? Um, I think, Lisa, we already know the answer to that is me. So here, did you did you see on Andrew's stream that I said you'd be the reseller that I'd take out on a date? Did you see that? No, I didn't, thankfully. <laughs> no. <laughs> this has all gotten a bit awkward now. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave. <laughs> So he no. has just remembered why he doesn't do live chats anymore. <laughs> I, was, I was just about to join Facebook again. <laughs> and, and, uh, now, and now he is core. He wants to take him out on a date. That's, no. Andrew. Dep well, depends. Where would we go? Uh, I'd say, I would say to you, we're going to go to your favourite place. Can you guess? And then where, KFC? where I'd take you. KFC. KFC. <laughs> I'd go on a date at KFC. Yeah, that's all it takes. <laughs> First branch of KFC in the UK, it's just over in Boston. <laughs> Where it all started. Really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Um, right, let's catch up the questions. We'll, we'll ignore the ones from Dave about George. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a fan there. Okay. We'll skip past a few more of Dave's questions because they're not appropriate for reading out. Uh, question, George, did you get paid for the toy you sold or are you still being messed around with non-paying bidders? Oh, of course uh, that's from Edward. No, not yet. Um, yeah, uh, I sold that sign. I don't know if you saw. £900. Oh, the Leica one? Uh, yeah, that's the one. The, the... Oh. 
and then I get a message saying, oh, sorry, I meant to put £90 offer. No way. No way. <laughs> oh, that's a low blow, that is. Uh, it was up for 500 I had a private message saying if I would accept 350 So I'd done the, what's it, reply to with offers, done that. They accepted it and still waiting. Yeah. And that was a really nice pickup. I remember when I saw that. Is that the one that, if I'm getting it right, it's the one that looks like a, a box of film? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Yeah. It's in my video. Um, yeah. It's not actually here at the moment. Um, but yeah, I've got it up for 12.95, I think, and it had like 80 watches. I don't know how many were like viewers. But yeah, it's back up for sale. <laughs> All right. We better give Steve a chance to introduce himself, his channel, and who he is. We don't think we've introduced our YouTube channels either, have we? We've all forgotten to mention our YouTube channels. Oh, true, yeah, true. Go on, Steve, introduce yourself. You can even you can even promote the Steve Green misadventures. <laughs> can I do my best Andrew impression? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve. Your favourite Steve. Hello, um, my name's Steve Green um, from the Steve Green Adventure. Hello. Oh yeah, that's about it. Okay, <laughs> world famous farmer. <laughs> Steve's a man of few words. Yeah, yeah. You watch his vlogs; they're only about fifteen minutes long of him talking. Yeah, the chatting just rubbish. Uh, pure vintage. Yes, I'm sure. Pure vintage had a question for us. What tips can you give us, girls, on buying Nintendo Xbox games? I haven't got a clue. I definitely think Steve's the best person to ask that question to. He loves Xbox games. Oh, I have no clue. <laughs> no, zero clue about games whatsoever. Uh, ben 10, I can tell you anything about Ben 10, but other than that, nothing. I think Peter's probably the man. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Well, research, research, research. Yep. Um, pretty much, like, obviously uh because like certain games go up and down in in value it, it sort of depends like luck luck with anything like the tv sort of thing what's a, on, on in the films what sort of thing um like if you're trying to work it out um like if it's xbox xbox 360 it's, it's just actually cracking on to doing doing your research and um and then just thinking because obviously like when you're going around your car boots your chat shops if it's like for 50p between 50p and a pound you, you can take a punt and then obviously you can work out if you're going to get a bundle up or like obviously star wars uh trying to think think now there's quite a few but it's just basically research is a pure key in this game I would agree. I would say if you're in a nine times out of mm -hmm. ten, if you're looking at something, you'll be in a position to either scan it or search it. Yeah, pretty much. With, with the, um, yeah, app on the uh... hundred mm -hmm. percent. I mean, if you're um, if you haven't got um, like the chance to do that, or say for example, you're at a car boot and yeah. then it's that early morning rush type thing, um, it's really difficult with anything that's past playstation 2 era playstation because yeah, totally. because to be honest with you most things that you buy which are ps2 ps3 xbox 360 they're not going to be like worth a lot of money at all it tends to be like the older generation and even then there's a lot which is just naff i mean you know even if you go back to like nick's atari cart where you know he sold one for five grand but on the same platform there are plenty which sell for well under a tenner um, and that's how old is the Atari system, Nick? I can't even remember. Is that like 80s or 70s? Late 70s, yes. early yeah. 80s, I believe. But so yeah, you're right. a lot yeah. of the Atari 2600 games are worth two pounds, literally. I've bundled up <laughs> loads of those just to get rid. I think there's no real shortcut with any niche. When you when you look into any niche in any depth, there's like so much to learn. And computer games is just like any other. I mean, there's a couple of shortcuts with Nintendo that any of the big in-house names like zelda mario kirby that sort of stuff you kind of on a safe bet with those but yeah it's difficult there's no shortcut answer to this stuff 
we all have to do our put in the time and learn and make mistakes and buy stuff that's crap you know it's the, the way yeah. the way that it is as well it's like in every niche there's so many sub niches and even in games like with sports games most mm. of the time they're just not worth picking up but even within the sports game niche there are still games that are going to make good money so it's again it's research like 100 percent what nick said yeah i think what was it the fifa on ps2 was it 16 or this, the last one the was last it one, yeah. yeah i had it not that long ago and i was it surprised the hell out of me Mm -hmm. Just because it was issued in limited numbers because the PS2 was coming to the end of its life. There's just not many about. But nine times out of ten, sports titles aren't worth the plastic they're made out of. It's just... <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's just the case of doing your research but not being afraid to take a risk as well. You know, if you're spending... The great thing about games is often you can, you can pick them up for 50p or a pound sort of thing. Yeah, but you're not you're not losing a huge amount of money if you make a bad bad buy. Yeah, you're right. Be prepared to take a punt now and again, and you'll learn very quickly when you start making mistakes. Everyone's going on about I should be eating chili in the chat. Thanks, for that, guys. <laughs> not eating chili ain't happening. You're gonna enjoy it, Andrew. <laughs> it's gonna be hot. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be hot, but it, it's nice. You for me <laughs> eat chili eat chili eat chili, eat chili i ain't eating no chili that ain't happening um oh they're saying in the chat there just to finish off about that fifa james collects says th fifa 13 i think we're still talking about ps2 is about 15 pounds 14 is about 50 so it goes to show they're the exception and there's always an exception that breaks the rule and stuff so yeah wow Whereas FIFA 2000 is worth about 2p. <laughs> I, I was actually, I wish I'd kept them now, but I had a bunch of sleeves when I was working as an EA rep. The, they'd send you out with all the, you know, the sleeves for the um, dummy boxes. Mm. And I had a bunch of sleeves for FIFA 14 on the PS2. I wish I'd kept them now because I, rem I remember distinctly that was one of the FIFAs that like we worked on and i wish i'd kept them now because i bet they'd have some value in them as well and i think also they do these ones where um you know like they have your favorite football club on the front they do like limited runs of of um of sleeves where you've got your favorite football clubs and they do them in the local area that the that the game's selling in cool so i don't know if that could be worth something and the nose picker says 500 subs andrew oh, no. <laughs> congratulations <laughs> I'm yeah, well, sure. well done, Andrew. I, I, I hey. hey. I'm sure people will unsubscribe after this. I'm sure they will. <laughs> Normally, my subs go up like that, and then I say something controversial, and they go straight back down again. That's the optimistic attitude you need. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, one of the questions we were going to talk about today is who are our inspirations? That can be sort of in reselling or outside of reselling. Um, I mostly added the outside of reselling so that not everyone said Nickens are here. Um, but oh, George is catching up now, isn't he? He's the new Ben Fitzpatrick. <laughs> how, how does it feel to be compared to Ben Fitzpatrick, George? Oh, it's an honour. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Ben quite a bit on like WhatsApp and that. But, um, yeah, he's not coming back anytime soon, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, it's quite nice when people do say that. I do try and make them a bit professional if I can but um yeah it's like it's like the opposite of what I do <laughs> George there's a serious reselling content I do that I've just turned up I tried to do easy videos but the wife doesn't let me it has to be good <laughs> she's the uh, director fair enough <laughs> but Corey who, who have been your inspirations in life um probably a a really weird place to go probably my nan and granddad because they've both been very entrepreneurial people through their entire life they've ran like a number of different businesses and now they're they're very deep into the property market now and it's something that i would love to do like i'd love to get into that and i know it's difficult but yeah they're, they're definitely someone that i look up to a lot which is a pretty deep answer <laughs> fair enough Derek, how about yourself? Derek, by the way, is the man behind Grand Theft Auto. Just <laughs> <laughs> drop that in there. <laughs> for the, the more subs. 
So, um, I guess if we're talking reselling, um, in general, it can be reselling um, or it can be in general, and it's not. Oh, <laughs> I suppose it, well, it is. So, <laughs> you don't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I, I, um, I suppose I take inspiration from people who have sort of come from nothing and built stuff up. So it's people like Alan Sugar and Richard, Richard Branson and stuff, you know, people like that. Um, you know, Alan Sugar, you know, he started as a market trader and, and did all of that and built up his company. And yeah, that that's the that sort of inspires me. And I, I, th I think that as I do the reselling, you know, you've got to, you know, I'm starting small at the moment, but um, the world is my oyster sort of thing. Um, so yeah, yeah, I would say those, those two really for reselling. And George, who in, who inspires George apart from his alter ego? <laughs> um, ah, I've got to think about this question. Uh, off the top of my head, uh, probably my dad, because he's always been self-employed his whole life, doing a job he hated, which is a complete opposite to me, where I obviously love reselling. Um, yeah, he had to do it to pay the bills, like 12 hour days, seven days a week. Uh, so yeah, look up to him for the hard graft and everything. And that's what I can think of right now. <laughs> Fair enough. And Nick? It was interesting that Corey said his grandparents because my instant thought was my grandfather. I was so close to my granddad. Uh, in many ways closer than my own parents and he was he was a thrifter he he had nothing as a kid and he lived through the war and he was that classic guy he would you know make and mend and buy stuff at jumble sales and charity shops and you know he was also a bit of a hoarder which my dad and, and me have kind of got from him but he just inspired me to to see the value in stuff really and and pick up stuff when it's cheap and he, he never resold he just mended stuff and gave it to people or used it for himself but i think that rubbed off on me as a kid you know he'd take me off on walks and he'd pick up stuff literally off the street and take it home mend it and and that stayed with me so that that kind of got me into seeing the value in stuff that nobody else sees the value in oh so we're, we're definitely seeing a family theme here how about for yourself peter uh, well, for me, uh, obviously my parents, my mum and dad and that sort of thing. Because um, obviously if they're there for me when they need me or when I need them, I, I should say. But mainly like who inspires me, like reselling related. It's, it's just everyone on the tat chat or on um, Celtic Traders or... Um, uh Corey's um youtube uh facebook group and that it's, it's just like everyone because like if they're also so friendly and that because if you're having a bad day you can just oh no go on and just sort of like what what's the word ha have a chat with people you kind of make friends and then obviously i would say like a year ago even a year ago, I wouldn't be doing this compared to like, if you watch my uh, first few lives compared to now, it's, it's just amazing. And um, like how I've sort of progressed, gained, got a lot of confidence, this and other, even in um, uh, picking up items for reselling. So it's basically my parents, mum and dad and reselling related, the whole touch map basically. Pretty much. Fair enough. And uh, while, while George is messing about, we'll go to Steve. Steve or Z? Steve. Steve. Ah. Um, uh, I'll get inspired by a lot of things. I get inspired by people every day, but I'd probably say the one thing that wanted me to, apart from hating my job, um, to work for myself. Um, my dad tried to work for himself for years and he never got it done. So it was always something, um, you know, I'd like to do because he never achieved it. 
and mum and dad were always really hard working or always worked ever since I was a kid. So um, definitely parents have always inspired me. But I, I, people inspire me all the time. So I, I just heard Money Mental UK then, Steve. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. Money Mental UK. <laughs> How about you, Z? What are your inspirations, mate? Um, I think, like, I get a lot of motivation from, you know, seeing really, really successful people, uh, especially, like, all the motivational speakers that you can find on YouTube, etc. But, like, the real inspiration for me was when I first um, started looking on YouTube, again, through hating my job, found this guy called DIY Mike in the US and like he really motivated me because he put up a video about how he was like a a, a teacher um and he he showed how much he sold on ebay in one year and that you can do it and i was like that got me really interested and then i hate to say it as in because it's so cliched now but then nick's videos made it real because at, at that point i was watching not just diy mike i think there was a few other us resellers like gill mama and uh, gil daddy and there were a few others back that i can't remember but they were all us based and when i saw nick's videos like this guy is in the uk here working for himself selling stuff that you know it credit where credit's due it was it was insane so i've got to say that was the main inspiration credit where credit's due so as cliched as it sounds and it's kind of cringy I have to say the truth. So, is DIY Mike still putting out content? He, do you know what? He's gone completely car kind of crazy. He still does the odd video based on business, but oh. um, he, yeah, he he made a video like years ago showing his year sales and when he was doing like car parts. But since then, he's I mean, he still does the odd businessy video, um, and his his eBay business is now like a million dollar turnover store now. Um, and he started, I think his first or second year he did like $150,000 so he's grown massively um, but one of his most popular videos on YouTube is actually him buying a house for his mum which I thought was like one of the it's one of those like ah, super sweet videos because you know his mum's worked hard all her life and then he surprises her by buying her a house you know that's like a, a wow. surprise a surprise that anyone would like to offer their parents isn't it and so he still makes videos but his video that I saw was it was years ago, like I said, like when, what, 2015 probably or whatever, I don't know, 2016. And he, but he, that was the video that planted the seed in my head when he was like, he was like, I'm not showing you this to show off. I'm just showing you these numbers. So you know that I know what I'm talking about. And he was like, I do this on eBay. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, really? Yeah. But it still wasn't real until, like I said, <laughs> until I saw your videos because you were doing it here in the UK. So I did need that to you know fantastic if you hear a um my my inspiration winston churchill <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> from from diy mike and nick hills the winston churchill that's that's a leap <laughs> i, I, I want to lead our country through uh the third world war <laughs> <laughs> No, um, Winston Churchill, because he's a man who, who ban battled a lot of demons during his life, um, you know, in terms of mental health and such like, but he still went on to become a, a very successful leader despite that. I suffer mental health problems myself, so anyone who can sort of conquer them and, and have such great achievements is always going to be an inspiration to me. Um, so that's my inspiration in sort of life. And then reselling-wise, Nick was the person who drew me into reselling. It's Hooray! Always <laughs> you can blame me as well. <laughs> so yeah, we've got a few more questions in the chat. Um, yeah. Some people are complimenting me on my smooth waves with the ladies. We'll What's that sound, Derek? Sorry, Andrew. What, I didn't quite catch what that was. Better kitchen. Oh, Derek's micro machines! Yay! Um, Nineteen pounds. Nice. Dex has asked the question: Do all of your own taxes? Or do, do you do all your own taxes or do you get help with them? And would you recommend doing it the way you choose? Uh, Corey, do you pay taxes, Corey? Uh, I do, and I do do all my own taxes. I do all my own finances. It's probably my least favorite thing in reselling to do. But yeah, I, I think in terms of like finances and stuff like that, it's more beneficial just to learn it yourself 
spend the few hours, few days, few weeks that you need to learn how to get it all done and stuff like that. Because you only really need to get an accountant when you get to a point where it's kind of out of your own control and you're wasting time doing things like that. The re the reason why I'm sounding so jolty at the moment <laughs> is because one of my shelving units just like I haven't touched it and it just like fell slightly. So if you hear a massive crash and I disappear for like five minutes, I've probably been squashed by tat. So I do apologize for that. But yeah, <laughs> finance wise <laughs> yeah. until until you have to. But yeah, I'm kind of I'm terrified at the moment. <laughs> Derek. Yeah, I do on my own as well. Um, I've heard that if you get an accountant you can it sort of pays for itself um through the the extra sort of stuff you can get from it but um i always felt that my my stuff's so so simple i guess so i've never really needed to to get one um so yeah i do i do it just myself yeah how about you george i know you do yours I use the QuickBooks app employed app from my phone. Uh, yeah, it's really simple. Uh, I think this is the most asked question I get since doing uh, YouTube. Yeah, it's just really simple. I think it costs like five or six pounds a month. And it, yeah, it makes life so much easier. And can you hear me now? Because <laughs> yeah. people say they yeah. can hear me. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you, George. I'm on my phone now. I was on the iPad and apparently it's still quiet. So messing about yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah i use the quickbooks app quickbooks app is really good because it tracks your mileage as well so yeah there's that as well good. if you put your location on you can like swipe it yeah. and then it automatically logs it and everything yeah yeah it, the only thing that annoys me on quickbooks is the password because i never remember what it is and it's always some stupid rule about what it's got to be mine's a thumbprint so i don't have to remember any of that like uh fingerprint or whatever it is yeah on the iphone yeah, yeah. I, i've got android yeah i never even thought of doing that that, that is the <laughs> kind of thinking we need george around for <laughs> when i'm working bloody hell <laughs> how about nick yeah we do all our own um when we first went vat registered which we're not anymore. We deregistered a, a few years back. Uh, when we were VAT registered and we started that, we had an, an accountant for a few years. And then I taught myself that as well. So for most of the time we've been self-employed, I've done it all myself. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it petrifies you, you know, you could get help with it, but it's not cheap. You know, and I would suggest that doing a, a basic tax return is not beyond the capabilities of most people. Uh, it's daunting, but the HMRC are there to help. Um, they're they're actually not too bad on the phones if you have a sim if you have a question. But don't leave it leave it to the last minute because you will be on the phone for hours waiting. So I, I've heard that their employees are like the really most brilliant people ever. Have you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Peter? Yeah, I do. Uh, all myself and um and obviously i've done a few so every year it gets that slight bit easier to kind of fill it in so it's it's not that daunting anymore it's, it's, it's just thinking I've, I've, I've got to do it write it down remember to do it by a certain time but once you've got it installed in your head it's fine yep steve is looking like he's ready to answer <laughs> Um, I do it myself, but when I say I do it myself, my wife does it. <laughs> I'm just out to collect the receipts and the bus passes, but yeah, I do do it myself, but I've, I, I do have a receptionist. <laughs> I hope she's not watching now. <laughs> Z, you can, um, this is the yeah. last chance to go different, Z. Do you do no, I, 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 unfortunately, I just do it myself as well. Um, <laughs> yeah um it, it, like like others have said it's not particularly uh difficult um the only thing is i've recently tried to log on to hmrc and you know how your browser remembers all your username and password mine's gone now so i'm gonna have to call them to yeah as i can't remember anything it's all remembered by the computer so i have to call them up otherwise i'm not going to be able to to um 
do a, the next one. But I don't have to worry until January now, do I? I do mine on like the 30th of January. Basically, <laughs> Steve approach just to just go yeah. just panic. Yeah. Put it on the last possible day. Pretty much. I, I do want to actually do it a bit more kind of structured going forward. Um, but I say that. Pardon? You've got an office now. Surely you can get an accountant to go with it. Oh, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, basically, our advice collectively is just do it yourself and hope for the best. Deal. Yes. Come to this channel, folks, for real, proper reselling advice. <laughs> um, there was a question as well, which I can't answer, but it was about how do your partners feel about you doing reselling? Um, I'm happily single, ladies, but you know, do feel free to send me a message on Facebook. <laughs> Yes, also attractive and single. <laughs> oh, lads, it's 2019 now, Andrew. Come on. I, it's I, very I, good point, George. I, I was born in the last century, so you know, I'm in the Stone Age. Um, uh, let's go, George. How does your partner feel about selling? <laughs> well, as you may or may not know, there is a video coming out me interviewing the wife and asking her questions like this, but she was actually the one that started all this. Uh, I think she bought a, the uh, Miller's antique book that you can get. She, uh, we bought it for her dad as like a birthday present or something. And I ended up keeping it. And that's how that started. Uh, she was the one that forced me to go full time. So she sort of believed in me. Awesome. <laughs> and yeah, she regrets it at times now. <laughs> Mm. Especially when I'm uh, rapping, uh, I tend to rap at midnight, and I've got the big three-inch tape that's not the quietest. And if you've heard George rap, that's something special. <laughs> Especially when I've got like a big TV or something, I don't have like clothing a lot. So um, yeah, she puts up with it, bless her. <laughs> but I've been kicked out of the house, so I've got my unit now. So yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Um, who wants to go next? Because I've got. Uh... <laughs> we'll go, Steve, shall we? Yeah. Um, yeah, she she doesn't mind. I don't think she likes that I take up most of the kitchen, a quarter of the living room. Um, the kids' bikes have to be hidden at the back of the sofa because I've got the shed. We were so. talking about reselling wise, not just how much how much room you take up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah, Reese, anyways. But yeah, yeah, it, I think she, does, she doesn't mind me doing it. She, she prefer she, um, it, it de stresses her now I'm at home. But, um, yeah, I don't think she likes stuff being everywhere all the time. I try and hide it, but it, it doesn't happen. When you say it de stresses her, how, like, do you keep the house tidy? Because I, I, I don't know, like, clearly do, not. Yeah, I'm a good house husband. Um, I cook every well. No, I don't cook every oh, night. Okay. Um, no, I've more to do. I've, I've now got to do all the all the kids' runs, picking the kids up, doctor's appointments, anything anything to do with the kids. Now it's my job. Love them to bits, but. <laughs> and Z, we know you're part of a reselling power couple. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean beck's always been fully on board and supportive with this um we our goal eventually is to be both of us full-time currently we're not there beck had to obviously go back to work full-time which is really difficult but she's blessed her she's so devoted to the cause as it were she took the hit to go back full-time and on her early days as well she actually still comes into the office when she finishes early at work to work and that's you know so i'm like yeah i'm i'm really lucky that i don't have that we don't have that a difference in in what we want to do or you know in that sense um but saying that as well getting the business out of the house has really helped as well because um it was becoming a bit of an issue with the, the space and the mess at home because i think you know it makes it harder to keep things homely when you know you've got crates and stuff like piled <laughs> up it's just not the normal decor is it you know you don't go to someone's house and just see 
like totes and stuff. It's just unless you live in a weird house, I don't know. Do, do you ever get like the candles on and then think, oh no, crap, that's the tap burning? <laughs> oh, exactly. Nick, we know you're part of the other reselling power couple. Yeah, we've always done this together, really. Um, the only time that Andrew wasn't involved was the very first business I started back in 98, which was a little secondhand record shop. But even then, we were we were boyfriend girlfriend back then and she helped out but that was that was only in my name but yeah for the last what is it god knows how long 17 18 years we've we've done this together so she's as much a part of it as me yep i don't know if anyone else has partners or not to be honest to ask um, can, can I just point out, Darren, um, Smart Resellings just put a question in. Um, do you pay the seller ladies royalties for stealing their idea, Andrew? I am sure there's an arrangement to be made. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a, like a, a mixed bag, seller ladies versus seller men one day. <laughs> My money's done the ladies. <laughs> when does the women bashing start? They're like a good man bash, so let's moan about them, shall we? <laughs> Bloody hormones. Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, but you talk about hormones, but I've still got a truckload of menopause pills that aren't selling. <laughs> go, go and visit the Money Mental Emporium and buy some menopause pills from me. That's my top tip. Bargain price, they don't go out of date for a year. You're on to a winner. <laughs> that is going to lose me some subs right away. <laughs> <laughs> um, have we got any more questions? I saw that one from Darren. Um, Butch had a question for Nick. How does it feel to be the godfather of reselling? <laughs> <laughs> um, no idea. Yeah. As I normally say, I'm just a bloke selling tat and talking about it on the internet. It's nothing amazing. So humble. <laughs> and it's Brandon, true. <laughs> Brandon wants to know when the next episode of Come Thrift With Me is coming out. I think I'm going to release that in 2024, Brandon. <laughs> I think, unless anyone spotted anymore, I think we've done all the questions in the chat. Uh, can any of the resellers rap? Corey, you can rap, can't you? I know Zahir's got bars. Zahir's got straight bars. <laughs> there, there, there are no bars here, Corey. So, I, I wish I had bars, definitely. But um, no, I can't even can't even sing along. I, I want to hear George's rapping he was talking about earlier. You mentioned your, your rapping skills. <laughs> with the, oh, no, the so three-inch tape. I wake up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> But yeah, I actually did used to make music back in the day. Used to go down to the studio, straight bars, straight fire. <laughs> oh, hello. We've got talent in the house. <laughs> right, guys. Maybe, maybe, maybe one day I'll put out a song on my channel. Maybe. You should do. Corey, you've got to give us a rendition now. It is with the Barlow Mega Rap. Not live and not with potato internet either. But but one day something that you guys can look forward to maybe. <laughs> All right, we'll hold you to that. It'll be like ads. I might get ads to feature on it when he was making it. <laughs> <laughs> can have a feature like you know, feet. <laughs> but yeah. ads video would be what is the philosophy of rap? That would be the That's true. Of it. Mm, true. It, it would be an hour long uh, discussion about the merits of rap as a as a style of philosophy. <laughs> about two minutes of rap music dbg said corey please don't rap <laughs> and um tat doctor has a question go on um, read it out uh, what niche would you like to know more about so <laughs> run corey you go go with that first what niche would i like to learn more about honestly clothing clothing is something that i've just got if I did go out and buy clothes for a little while, but I would only buy things that I already knew the brands of. And when I watch clothing resellers, they're so, they just pick out brands that I've never heard of and they seem to sell for like 40, 50 plus. It's something that I really need to look into more because as soon as I go into charity shops and car boots, I walk past the clothes. I don't even pay them any attention. So 
I think clothing is definitely something that I need to pay a bit more attention to and look into a bit more. You just stole my suggestion. I was going to go clothing as well. That's so <laughs> fair. People's suggestions, to be honest. <laughs> It's not a niche that I would like to know more about, because I know about it, but it's a niche that I would like to I'd like to be able to to get into, which is large electronics. So that George does. Uh, but with my packaging <coughs> skills being what they are at the minute, I'm not quite ready to hit the uh, the large electronics market yet. It's like leveling up in a video game, getting packaging <laughs> XP. That's exactly how I see it. I, if I was saying to a new reseller, I'd always say start small, you know, maybe media, something like that. Build your skills and expertise until you hit the bigger stuff. Because I know lots of people will go and pick something up and it might be, you know, might cost them 20, but they sell it for 200. But then as soon as that refund request or whatever comes in, you can be wiped out by it. So start, I'd definitely say start small with stuff until you've built up enough money that you can sit and you can take the hit on something coming in or breaking or whatever and you know it won't it won't disrupt your business too badly um i can't remember what the question was oh yeah uh niches you want to know more about derek yeah i'm gonna say clothing as well um because i go into a charity shop i walk past all the racks of clothing <laughs> and i go to the sort of the tat at the end brick a rack and i mess about with things that are like four pound five pound but i've probably walked past stuff that's worth 60 pound on the shelves but i just never look at them and it's the same at car boot sales you know you see the racks of clothing i did buy um my first piece of clothing for a while which is uh, um, an orvis shirt <laughs> which um, I got for a pound and I sold it for 30, I think, um, which has encouraged me even more to learn about it. Um, so it's really something that I'm I'm thinking about now. You know, it's the sort of thing I'm thinking about. So, yeah, it's definitely something I need to know about. It's not even want to know about. I think I need to know about it because I walk past all this money, effectively, all the time. So, yeah, clothing. I hate clothing. <laughs> I have. I thought this thing it just bores me to tears. Really, you just gave like a really good little description there of, of all the benefits and why you should do it. And I just loved it. I, I hate clothing. And then a dose of reality. Yeah, yeah, but I hate, I hate clothing. It. Yeah. That's, why I do, that's why I deal with all the rest of the stuff. But I just know that I'm missing out on a lot because a lot of people have a, a full time income. And um, yeah, I'm just walking past it all the time. So, yeah, clothing. <laughs> I think I've got it. I've, I've got it sussed because uh, I've just taken Andrea along, and she picks out the gems, and I don't even have to look <laughs> or list it or photograph yeah, it. I know, yeah. right? Measure it. <laughs> or me yeah, measure it. And yeah. yeah, all that time-consuming, boring stuff. I'm with you, Derek, on the hating it. I've got about. 10 boxes 10 64 litre boxes really useful ones that are full of clothes that i just cannot be bothered with so they just get pushed to the back of the storage unit i've stopped picking up now so i'm like you're never going to list it and then i've actually started some of the stuff i've listed has actually started selling in the last week or so so now i'm like oh, there is money in this maybe you should get into it yeah it's a lot of it enjoying the process, oh, I'm sorry, sorry go on mate i was gonna say a lot of it's about enjoying the process and like as much as it's a niche that i'd like to learn i just don't enjoy selling clothes because i don't enjoy taking the photos measuring it asking <laughs> answering the questions all of that kind of stuff so um, yeah it's a weird one yeah i don't want reselling to become a, a job effectively you know i i enjoy what i'm doing mm -hmm. If I'm there just photographing clothing after clothing, after clothing measuring armpit um, lengths or whatever it is, uh, I'd rather be testing a Sony Hi-Fi and cleaning that up and making that look really nice and selling that. Or, or listing some flanged bearings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's, it's the measuring that does my head in. It's the, it's the measure and the fact that 
every time you've got it cracked, eBay then go, oh, yeah, there's a new item specific that's now mandatory for this piece of clothing. And you're like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> also, um, you've got to iron it and steam it and do all that as well. Which yeah. <laughs> I do that with my own clothes, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm not doing it just for that, really. But, yeah. <laughs> Sure. Uh, that's typical. Got a bunch of lads moaning about clothing, and then ironing <laughs> comes up. Like, oh, he's got to iron it as well. Oh my god, that's it. Clothing's out. I just put uh, on the floor and just flatten it out of my hands. <laughs> that, that works. Yeah, absolutely, George. This can be any more opposite to the uh, the reseller ladies chat. Could it really? Could it really? To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> we should finish with favourite niche, but we'll um, we'll see what George wants to pick up. What, what George wants to learn about first. Uh, my number one thing is watches, like pocket watches or wrist watches, because um, they're always in auctions and they're always at boot sales, but I can't tell what's what. Um, plus, I know they can go for really good prices, obviously. Uh, I learned more... Well, last year it was trainers, because obviously you see trainers everywhere. Um, I've learned that now. And then over the winter, I started picking up men's clothing. And like um, Derek said, uh, the amount of stuff I found, just flicking through quickly, sort of mind-blowing. Like I picked up an Arsenal training shirt thing that sold for 90 quid within 24 hours. That cost me like two or three pounds. Um, yeah, I try and challenge myself every year, but I'm now on to watches. Yeah. I've noticed you sell quite a lot of um, trainers, George. Um, yeah, it's suddenly gone a bit nuts. <laughs> but I'm always worried about them being sort of fakes and stuff because I see a lot of yeah. fakes at the boot sales and I'm always worried that if I buy like a Nike boot, football boot or whatever, it's just going to be a, a fake. So that, sh um, that drives me away from it all as well, you know. But it's more the, with the watch is about fakes. I mean, that yeah. I've got a watch here that if it's right, is worth hundreds. But yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. Have to take it somewhere to get checked out because I honestly don't trust myself to to you know put it up as a genuine. Yeah. I, and the thing is, the quality. Is so I mean, a couple of years back, I th I bought um like a job lot of of actually trainers from auction, and in one of them, in like a sock, was a watch, and it was only a Gucci watch, so it wasn't like a a high end um like it wasn't like a proper watch. It was more of a designer watch, but it still nonetheless had a bit of weight, and I thought it would have some value looking at the completed, and I was convinced it was real, but that I had that nagging feeling that Derek's talking about. So I obviously took to the back of it opened it up and compared it to um, another seller that was selling the watch and had shown the movement and it like inside it said you know made a Swiss movement made in Switzerland blah 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 and my one was just made out of like plastic crap <laughs> you know like it was like the worst watch ever put inside this amazing case um, and you honestly from the case would struggle to tell it wasn't legit because it was just, you know, it was just such good quality. The only thing that kind of made me think that is because it, it had a partial LCD display as well as a regular watch. And I just felt the LCD display looked a bit dimmer than it should. It just felt like it was a bit something not right. And so, yeah, go. I had a guy, um, he bought something from me and picked it up in person. Um, and he sells on eBay. Um, he was telling me about his fees and that, like he's, Bill every month's like two or three grand and I, he showed me his um ebay store and he's only ever got things listed so 50 to 80 listings but they're just like three figure four figure watches and jewelry and it's i think i'm still following him now and just literally every week he's got 800 pound watches just like on a cycle wow which is, that's one of the reasons why i want to learn it but that's got to yeah. be organized crime in it it's probably going around it's probably a hat and garden heist <laughs> that. Uh, Steve, what about you, mate? Um, I'd probably say electronics, but I'm I'm always too scared to pick one. Like when I see people say electronics for like hundreds of pounds, and I was I wouldn't know. Like I don't know. Like when you there's certain codes and certain electronics, I wouldn't know if I walk past it. I probably walk past hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of stuff, and I haven't got a clue. But I'm, I'm always scared to pick it up just in case it doesn't work. I can't get out of that fear. But I need to. That's the problem I have. A lot of 
stuff I get, at least at boot sales I get. And there's always something wrong with it. It needs sort of tinkering with like the heads cleaning and yeah. all of that. Very rarely works sort of out of the box, as it were. Um, so, yeah. You try and be a bit braver. Is it, yeah. Even if it's working, you could break them right down like a video DVD combi. I took the DVD drive out. That's still worth 20, 30 quid. Or the remote yeah. control. I sold one the other day for 20. The hard drives in those as well can be quite good if they're big as well. Oh. Just Hello, so. Tom. What's up, Tom? Mm -hmm. Hi, Tom. Hey, Tom. How are I, you? I am so sorry for the delay. I've, You've been I've trying to get in for an hour. <laughs> no, no, I've just, I've just <laughs> been in the porch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I've been stuck in the porch. Yeah. I figured out the mouth was <laughs> That was why you couldn't click the link. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, my hands were like covered in in crap up to my elbows. <laughs> Explosive, like baby flying around just. Pooing everywhere. Oh, so literally, actually covered yeah. in. Oh, okay. Yeah, literally covered in poo. <laughs> That's all I can smell now. So we're uh, fun. Well, so yeah, I thought I'd jump on for a few yeah. minutes and say hello. Yeah, hi, can you introduce yourself to everyone, Tom. There's like I know, hundred people watching. Oh, flipping it. Well, um, gosh, I feel all flustered now. So uh, I think uh, I think this cup probably sums it up. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I'll probably end up spilling it over my Mac. But yeah, I'm Tom. I sometimes put up YouTube videos, and uh, yeah. So, so how's it going, everyone? Good. Yeah. We haven't Good. fallen out of each other yet. Uh, any boot sales today? Mine were rained off. No, I went to one. Yeah. Two for me. Very but, frustrating. Yeah, I, I was decided to court. I was made the call yesterday to 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 be off both days. Like they didn't even wait to see what the weather was going to be like today, which is annoying. But they don't seem to have bank holiday Monday boot sales here around by me, which is quite annoying. There was there's one I went to about a month ago, but it was really rubbish, so not worth driving to. It's so far away, um, and it was really small. But yeah, they don't seem to do it in Scotland for some reason. The Monday ones, are all, I normally find Monday ones are rubbish anyway. It's all the rejects from Sunday. But yeah. That's a good point. I felt I that a couple of weeks yeah. ago, actually, with the bank holiday. I thought we did, we came away with nothing and it was a bank holiday Monday, yeah. And that's what people said as well, actually. Yeah, that's a good point. The thing I did notice at um, the auctions, on when there's a bank holiday weekend and there's an auction on, I used to do quite well you know, at the auction because everybody else is away, so there's no, not many people bidding on stuff. Yeah. Um, so that. yeah, I tend to miss bank holiday stuff because we, we arrange to do stuff with the family quite often. Like this weekend, we were away the whole time and I managed to resist going to the boot sales. But yeah, interesting. Do, have you, any of you lot been to midweek ones before? Sorry, Andrew. Yeah, they tend to be crap around here. Quite the time. Mm. Well, I, I went to um, a couple down by my brother's house and where, where Steve, remember where Steve is, and um, they were brilliant. They're bigger than the Sunday ones I get up here. Wow. <laughs> so, There's a couple of, uh, I've been there too, rubbish. Yeah. A couple of midweek ones here, but um, with the kids, obviously I've got to do the school run, so by the time I drop them off and get there, it's basically like wrapping up. Yeah. I um, I don't like the bank holiday Monday ones because round here, I went to uh, last weekend, last bank holiday, went to one, and it was literally just all the people who had been to not even the same one, but one down the road the day before, just selling what they hadn't sold previously. And I was just like, I've seen all this stuff before. Mm. I think what you said there, like round here is the key. Like I, I think the more I've like done this the, the more i've noticed the variation like the regional variation in what you can find um and the types of car boots re it does pay to look around because it's it's really different like i mean I just listening to george talk about trainers has made me reminisce i used to find like air force ones for days down south up yeah. here i don't think i've seen a single pair like <laughs> since being up here it's like it's weird how you, you see different things in different places. Even within this area, different boot sale to boot sale, 
they're like chalk and cheese sometimes. You know, some I don't even bother going to now, whereas others, you know, I can fill the car up at one sale. And it's not always because I did that whole amateur thing, I guess people do where you go, is that a posh area? I'll go to the posh area. They'll have all the good stuff. That's not a guarantee at all. You can go to it is just about going to as many different ones as you can until you come across a couple that you can call like, like, you know, your your, your perfect trifecta or whatever on a Sunday that you can go around and and do well at. That's where I'm lucky. Literally, the nearest one to me is my little honey pot or whatever it's called and then around the corner is my other one that's where i got the sign in that from i tried a big one today uh dunton which is like one of the biggest or something in the country but half of it was like a market stall and i just went back to my safety net and done just as well there yeah I think the huge ones like our beach like me are around I've got the biggest one in north wales just down the road you can go there fill your car quite easily but i avoid that one because that's where all the resellers go and i'm just like Unless you're there first thing and rushing around quick or lucky, you won't get stuff. So I, I, I like you say, I've got a couple that I pick out, I go to, while everyone else is down the road at the big one. Is that a chip? Yeah. Yeah, I've done really well there before. It's weird. So I get some, I get some really good pickups at Chirk, but mm, it's aggressive. Knows. I was going to say, Andrew, do you want to talk about what the idea is with this chat and how it's going to move forward from this? Um, yeah, so basically the intention is weekly we will have um, uh, a set of lads chat. Um, this was just the first one, opportunity for us to introduce ourselves, um, say hi to everyone, etc. But going forward, it'll be on a rotation. We'll be rotating between different channels. Um, it'll be probably be different people each week in different times each week as well because it'll be around it'll suit whoever's the host we still got to work out the details for next week we'll have specific topics that we'll cover um and we'll, obviously we'll be agreeing those beforehand but we'll also be open to ideas and suggestions from the chat as well um i'll probably start off a thread in the chat chat um for sell a lad ideas as well if anybody's got anything specific they want to see about so we'll just give some, um, and we'll we'll give we'll share some of our uh, experiences as resellers, some of the stuff we like to pick up and whatever. Talk about that, and then we'll probably also talk about more lavish things as well. Lads, 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 lads. lads. <laughs> Did anyone see the game earlier? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, was, yeah. it, it was it was actually <laughs> weird saying about saying about that because I think Derby were playing or something like that, and obviously I'm by Derby, so I couldn't give a monkey's about that. So I was like driving to go to my storage unit, and it was like a ghost town. It was proper weird. Yeah. It was... The father in <laughs> Derby, so he went happy earlier. <laughs> and Lincoln won the league, so I'm happy. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, yeah. Um. So I think we'll we'll finish off. Maybe just uh, answer the what is our um, favourite niche to pick up and source in each one of those, and then we'll um, we'll sign off for the night because um, we're only going to be an hour. And we've been an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. We'll go Corey first. Um, my answer is probably quite short with it, to be honest. It's mostly toys and games. It's mostly like things that I find nostalgic is what i enjoy picking up the most and i think it's more just because you have almost like a slight emotional attachment to the item as well as the profit instead of just picking it up for money so for me my favorite (laughs) buying selling is most likely toys and games derek it's probably um vintage electronics so the best things for me is if i see something that i remember from my childhood um or i've I've seen sort of around at that point in time. So you got like the snazzies and hi fi's that of the time, that sort of thing. Um so yeah, that's what I like to pick up. Um yeah, I, I like like seventies stuff like the chrome sort of effect, the silver proper metal sort of hi fi separate systems. I enjoy all of that as well. The downside to that it obviously, obviously needs a lot of cleaning and testing and things like that so it has its downside but i it just gets me excited i like to get something that's all sort of 
dirty and manky, cleaned it, cleaned it all up and put it for sale next to all the other really good ones. And, you know, it's a really high price. And that, that's the thing I really like. You know, when I, when I buy something so cheap and it's in such a poor condition, it's not being looked after, but then I pitch it against all the good stuff that has been in a loft for years and such, but my one's been cleaned up and it looks really nice. And then I get, you know, top color for it. That's what, that's what does it for me, I think. Okay. Uh, George? Uh, obviously, the mid-century stuff used to be my favourite, but now it is moving towards vintage electronics again, like Derek. Uh, my absolute favourite is probably really sort of wacky shop displays, like X shop displays, uh, signs. Um, depends what mood I'm in, really. That's my main thing, like lamps, chairs. I don't know. If you can wrap it up and send it with parcel false, yeah, that'll do me. Cool, Nick. Um, yeah, similar to what Corey was saying, really, vintage gaming and toys. I'm, I'm just a big kid, really, but I mean, it would be retro gaming because you you end up finding the little gems like I shared earlier, and it just the thrill I get out of finding a a, a really nice vintage game. It's just, yeah, can't beat it. I'm still a collector in that sense, in that I'm I'm looking for little gems from the past. Peter? Um, for me, obviously, it'll be gaming stuff, like, from the 90s, like Mega Drive, Master System, PS1, that sort of thing. Um, also, like, retro toys from, from the 90s, like, you've got Ninja Turtles, uh, for example, um, Power Rangers, that, that sort of thing. So, just vintage toys and, uh, and games. Cool. And um, Steve, we know you're a great fan of breakables. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything anything clouding at the minute. I'm really into my clouding at the minute. That's Ooh, actually contentious. Go join the fellow ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I've already asked to come on and they won't let me on. <laughs> Can't you go on like this? <laughs> <laughs> I've been off just for one one episode. See if they let me on. You never know. <laughs> I bet they would. If you shave your beard, especially, I bet they'd let you in. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna message them later and see see if. Well, I, see I know if exactly. We had half of them in. There was Shell and um, uh, Heather and Kelly. They're all in there. And Put some little plats in it. Little plats with like nice colours. Mm -hmm. It's a halfway house. Yeah. Oh, Shelley says you're welcome anytime. You know the deal. What's the deal? Shaving the beard. <laughs> What's the deal, Shelley? I don't remember any deal. Hours, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. You still there, Tom? Oh, sorry. Did you? Sorry, you cut out briefly then. Me, uh, it's going to be much like everyone else's. Really, it's a uh, vintage uh, gaming stuff, you know, your Nintendo and all that sort of thing. But it's, it's it's probably not my best because the problem is I want to keep it all. That's that's the issue. So profitability wise, it's not not my strongest area. Um, probably the strongest profitability area wise is is jewelry. So I've got to go over to seller ladies now as well. <laughs> That that is an answer I was not expecting. Yeah. There you go. See, do we need to guess? It it changes. It changes. I used to actually do a fair bit of electronics, um, but I, I just I don't know. I'm just not in the zone for it at the moment. It's much like um, like Steve says at the moment, clothing. Like you know, it, it can change. So um, at the moment, it's um, flanged bearings. Um, in the future, it might change. Why do I giggle every time you say flange? Because it sounds so funny. <laughs> I've, I've been telling Beck about it all day. Beck, we saw some flanged bearings. <laughs> is she bearing with it? Uh, yeah, she, she's, she's an angel. She mm. listens. For me, it would probably be retro games and board games as well. 
that just seems to be it's pretty easy to source and pretty easy to package up generally and yeah there's always demand so always happy with that but yeah no clothing hate clothing yeah i didn't mention board games but if a nice vintage retro board game is kind of yeah that's up there with video games for me as well definitely all right folks i think we've kept the chat entertained long enough um how do we sign off? How, who wants to sign off? Should we just sort of say a collective goodbye or should we plug our channels or what? I think we say congratulations, Andrew. You've reached 500. When's the uh, special oh. video coming out? Uh, <laughs> yep. it, is, is, it, is it a video where you put hot chili on an onion and, <laughs> and, and admit that, yeah, at the same time? And then eat it through the mask. Yeah, but, eat it through the mask while <laughs> saying that um, Shrek is an ogre. Coming soon on the Money Mental channel. <laughs> I'm going to die. YouTube will see my death. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you, people in the chat. Thank you for staying with us for this first episode. Episode two will come out next week. Look out for announcements on Facebook, on the chat chat, on whatever we promote it on. And, uh, yeah, thanks all for watching. Cheers, guys. See you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you later.